Call roll to confirm a quorum. Councilmember Abdelgawad. Here. Councilmember Barber. Present. Councilmember Burke. Present. Councilmember Holman. Present. Councilmember Hubach. Present. Councilmember Kellogg. Present. Councilmember Moorhead. Present. Councilmember Stevens. Present. Mayor Kirkhoff. Present. We do have a quorum. Everybody please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. We have no presentations or awards tonight and no personal appearances, so we'll move right on to staff reports. Thank you, Your Honor. I would ask that Ms. Warner make a report to the council this evening. Thank you, sir. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Just a reminder of the MML Westgate Civic Leadership Award program to be held on July 16th in Blue Springs, Missouri. Please RSVP to the City Clerk's Office by Wednesday, July the 8th, if you plan to attend. And nominations for the award are to be submitted to MML no later than June 27th, and that can be done online, Mayor. That's all. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Ms. Warner. I would ask that Mr. Kras please make the monthly report for Public Works. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Fairborn. Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of Council, I'd like to update you on the uh, Farmers Market site work that's going on. The with the break in the weather, the contractors made quite a bit of progress on the concrete work. They poured the uh, they poured the slab for the depot today. They have just a little bit of concrete work remaining on the north part of the site for the entrance road. We're hopeful that towards the end of the week we will be able to negotiate a, a certificate of substantial completion with the contractor. Uh, what that will allow us to do is take possession of certain areas of the work that are completed and ready to put in service and hopefully uh, we will be able to utilize the pad and some of the other patio areas for the farmers market next Tuesday and that concludes my report mm -hmm. would you mind um, just taking a few photos when that's done and sharing them with us at our next meeting Absolutely. I think the public would like to see that I know I would thank you thank you mr. Krass I would ask that Mr. Mustine please make the report for Parks and Recreation for this month. Thank you, sir. Mayor, Council, um, just a monthly report, give you a quick update on what's going on in Parks and Rec. Um, I've been working on a new member handbook for park board members just to kind of go over some procedures, uh, policies, and things that the department does. We've got a lot of new park board members since this last version was out. and So we finished that, and we're going to present that to the park board tomorrow night at their regular scheduled meeting. Uh, as Mr. Kras just mentioned, the farmer's market tomorrow night is uh, the farmer's market. I believe it's week three, so it's going very good. A again, a very popular event in town, and so we're pretty excited about that. A couple of events that we've had in your, in your report, I provided some pictures on June 13th. We had our 13th annual Walter Buck Memorial Fishing Derby at Hawk Ridge, and we had a really good group of kids turn out, a lot of, had a lot of fun. We had a sponsor donate uh, hot dogs this year so that was something new and everybody seemed to really like it so we'll probably add that uh, I'd like to say my son won the contest uh, casting contest so we have a new fishing pole added to our family <laughs> and um, we also did the challenger sports uh, soccer camp last week and we had a number of kids uh, based on previous years we've had about 10 or 15 more sign up for that this year so that's a good program and we're we're pleased to have that we did a very large baseball tournament this past weekend, had very successful. All the tournaments have been very good this year. Coming up this week is the adult softball tournament. It is all day Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And this is a senior softball tournament, so the majority of these folks are 55 years and older in different divisions and, and teams. And if you have not seen or watched this, take time to go down to the rec park this week on Thursday, Friday, because it is fantastic watching these guys. And I'll tell you, they'll put you to shame. They'll, they'll, they'll embarrass you how good they are and how fast they can still run. So, so that's what we got going on in the month of June. Thank you. Questions of staff? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mustine. Uh, just update the council on upcoming meeting. Uh, next week, the council did by consensus agree to come in on the fifth Monday of the month. Uh, we will be having a joint uh, meeting with the park board right now there is one item 
uh, is an a topic item for that particular meeting, and that is a review of the memorandum of understanding with the park board. And of course, if any of you would like to see an electronic version, just let me know after the meeting. I'll be sure we get one to you. That concludes staff reports, sir. Okay, thank you. There are no committee reports, so we'll move on to the consent agenda. I'll entertain a motion to dispose of the consent agenda. Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve a consent agenda to include item A, City Council minutes for June 8, 2015, and B, the approval and acceptance of the Silver Lake Stormwater Improvement Project. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Motion passes unanimously. Move on to unfinished business. May we have the second reading of Bill 3071 by title only, please? The second reading of Bill 3071 by title only, an ordinance of the City of Raymore, Missouri, amending the development standards applicable to the R1P single family residential plan district zoning classification for lots located in Prairie View of the Good Ranch, located in sections 20, 28, and 29, Township 46 North, Range 32 West, Raymore, Cass County, Missouri. I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve resolution. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> bill 3071, Prairie, bill, Prairie View rezoning. We have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second to approve Bill 3071. Is there any discussion? All in favor? One, two, three, four, five. Opposed? One, two, three. Motion carries. We have the second reading of Bill 3073 by title only. The second reading of Bill 3073 by title only. An ordinance of the City of Raymore, Missouri, amending Chapter 605, Businesses, Trades, Occupations, and Service Occupations, Licenses, Taxes, and Regulations of the Raymore City Code. I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve Bill 3073 for the am amendment of the City Code Chapter 605 regarding businesses, trades, occupations, and service occupations, licenses, taxes, and regulations. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve Bill 3073. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Motion carries unanimously. We have a second reading of Bill 3079, please. The second reading of Bill 3079 by title only. An ordinance of the City of Raymore, Missouri, approving and authorizing the mayor to enter into a guaranteed pricing contract with Praxair to provide a liquid oxygen storage system for the Owen Good Pump Station odor control improvements. I want to retain a motion. Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve Bill 3079 for a liquid oxygen storage system for the Owen Good Pump Station improvement. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve Bill 3079. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Motion carries unanimously. We have a second reading of Bill 3078 by title only, please. The second reading of Bill 3078 by title only. An ordinance of the City of Raymore, Missouri, authorizing the mayor to enter into an agreement with Microcom for the Owen Good Pump Station Odor Control Program, Odor Control Improvements, SCADA modifications, city project number 15-183-201 in the amount of $14,706 and authorizing the city manager to approve change orders within established budget constraints. I'll entertain the motion. Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve Bill 3078 for the SCADA system regarding the Owen Good pump station improvement. Second. You know, a motion and a second to approve the second reading of Bill 3078. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Motion carries unanimously. We have the second reading of Bill 3076 by title only, please. The second reading of Bill 3076 by title only. An ordinance of the City of Raymore, Missouri, authorizing the mayor to enter into an agreement with Bright Construction LLC for the Owen Good Pump Station Odor Control Improvements Project, City Project Number 15-183-201, in the amount of $227,269 and authorizing the city manager to approve change orders within established budget constraints. Do we have a motion? Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve Bill 3076 for the Owen Good Pump Station Odor Control Construction. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the second reading of Bill 3076. Is there any discussion? All in favor? 
Motion carries unanimously. We have the second reading of Bill 3077 by title only, please. The second reading of Bill 3077 by title only. An ordinance of the City of Raymore, Missouri, authorizing the mayor to enter into an agreement with Terry Snelling Construction, Inc. for the City Hall Police Department sidewalk and Olive Street sidewalk, sidewalk project, city project numbers 15-221-201 and 15-222-201 in the amount of $119,329 and authorizing the city manager to approve change orders within established budget constraints. Do we have a motion? Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve Bill 3077 for the modification of the City Hall Police Department sidewalk and Olive Street sidewalk. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the second reading of Bill 3077. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Motion carries unanimously. We have the second reading of Bill 3080 by title only, please. The second reading of Bill 3080 by title only, an ordinance of the City of Raymore, Missouri, amending the Internal Services Fund of the Fiscal Year 2015 budget. We have a motion. Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve Bill 3080 for the budget amendment for police vehicle and equipment replacement program. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the second reading of Bill 3080. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Motion carries unanimously. We have the second reading of Bill 3074 by title only, please. The second reading of Bill 3074 by title only, an ordinance of the City of Raymore, Missouri, approving an agreement with the Community Bank of Raymore to provide the city depository services for a three-year period. I want to entertain the motion. Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve Bill 3074 for the depository services agreement. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the second reading of Bill 3074. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Motion carries unanimously. That takes care of old business. We move on to new business, beginning with a revocation of an occupational license and a liquor license. You know, staff report, please. Thank you, sir. I'll call Ms. Warner. Thank you. Uh, the city of Raymore had been notified previously by the Missouri Department of Revenue that the retail sales tax license of the pit, grill, and bar had been revoked for delinquent taxes, delinquent payment of its sales taxes. A public hearing was held at the April 27, 2015 City Council meeting, at which time the Council motioned and voted to defer action on the licenses this, to this meeting to allow the applicant additional time to resolve her issues with the Department of Revenue. On June 19, the City Clerk was provided with the application and payment for the occupational license and liquor license. The City Clerk does find that the applicant meets the requirements set forth in City Code for the occupational license. Staff requests a motion and a second, followed by a vote to close the public hearing on the revocation and suspension of the licenses. After the vote, Mr. Fearborn has further information to prevent, present for Council's information. Mr. Mayor, I'd make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Motion and a second to close the public hearing. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, sir. Um, <clears throat> so as of this vote this evening, uh, the business license for the pit is in place. Uh, the, there is a, a further issue that has come up. Uh, according to city code, unless you have a valid business license in place, you cannot apply for a liquor license. So as of tomorrow, staff will be authorized and they have provided all of the information that staff needs to actually apply for the liquor license. We have it in the office, but the business license needs to be in place before we take the public steps towards moving forward with a liquor license. Um, tomorrow we'll be able to do that. <clears throat> the problem is the current liquor license for the pit expires on June 30th, which means if we followed normal city practice, we would post up for a 14-day period and at a regular meeting of the City Council there would be a media, a public hearing to uh, to uh, grant them a liquor license the uh, the the owners of the pit have worked very very hard and and worked very hard with staff to make sure that the business license is in place in time staff would uh, offer two alternatives 
to the granting of the liquor license that seem to be uh, both valid points that the, the council could take relative to getting this business license in place prior to July 1. First is we could post up this week uh, on the door of the business, on the bar of the business, uh, surrounding businesses, uh, and also get into the journal this week. They are prepared to post in the journal this week uh, an advertisement for a public hearing to take place next Monday night at a special meeting prior to your work session. That would be on the 29th. If the council granted the liquor license at the public hearing, then, the, then of course it would be granted on Tuesday. It, it would be in place and it would, everything would be fine by the 1st. The second option that the council seems to have before them is there is nothing in code that precludes you or forbids you from granting an extension of the current liquor license that is in place until the meeting on the 13th. You do grant extensions for business licenses, as in this particular example. Uh, the, so those seem to be the two options before the council. The third option, of course, being uh, that the liquor license is expired on June 30th and they go through the normal process, but they cannot serve the liquor between July 1 and July 13th. That concludes staff report, sir. Mr. Mayor, I'd make a motion that we uh, continue the applicant's liquor license through July 13th, 2015. Second. second. There is a motion and a second to continue the liquor license through July 13th. Any discussion? All in favor? Yes. Mr. Mayor. You had the discussion? Go ahead. Where I appreciate that motion, um, I'm kind of hesitant to do that to, um, by the, the fear of setting precedences. We have a, another option that we can do that I'm more comfortable with, and that is to hold a, a special meeting before next Monday night's uh, work session, I think would be more prudent. I have no idea what the future holds of, of different um, retailers or, or that. I, I just, I don't wanna set a precedence that in the future I, it will come back for me to regret uh, I have no problems with with uh, helping out this this business owner. Uh, that was evident last time you were before us. Uh, I appreciate everything you've done with staff and work with them and all of that. Uh, no, no negativity here at all. I just want to be sure that I'm protecting my constituents in the city of setting precedences in the future. Like I say, I have no idea what the future holds, but I, I always fear of the worst case scenario. So uh, where I, like I say, to reiterate, I, I appreciate this, but I think there's a, a more prudent way, and that's the first option that uh, Mr. Feuerborn talked about. Any other discussion? Mr. Mayor, point of order, had we already voted before? Not yet. No. no we haven't voted on it yet. I thought we had voted to approve it before he spoke nope. up. All right. Nope. Thank you. Um, and, and this is not in contrast to um, my fellow council member, because I respect the concern. Um, two po points that led me to make the motion. One is uh, the first option would require additional cost on the city regarding publication that we would not have if we chose the second option, which was the standing motion. In addition, actually, each time that we have these um, continuances regarding these uh, occupational and liquor licenses, we in essence, uh, there's a stay of execution regarding any revocation. So actually the precedent has been uniform to do the extension. Actually, if we did option the first option, that is actually against the precedent that we have. Any other discussion? Okay, there's a motion and a second to approve the continuance until July 13th. All in favor? Opposed? Abstain? We have seven in favor, one in, uh, abstaining. Motion carries. 
Mr. Mayor. Yes. It's customary for the council, at least in the past, to give their reasoning for abstentions, and I will uh, give that reason now. Uh, I'm, I, I, I'm uncomfortable with the second option. I am more comfortable with the first option. With the minimal cost of what it would cost us to run in the uh, journal, I, I think it's, it's prudently spent. I think it would be money's prudently spent. It isn't uh, exorbitant amount. I mean, I, I don't know how much it would cost the city, but I can't imagine it being more than $25, $30 to do that. Uh, so th that's my reasoning for, for abstaining. Uh, again, to the, to the business owner, the, no negativity here at all. And I, I, I think you, you understand that. It's just that I'm, I feel that my responsibility to my constituents in the community is requiring me to, to react this way. So thank you for showing up, though. Mr. Mayor, the, mm -hmm. the applicant has requested to speak a few words to council, if allowed. Okay. Excuse me as my voice gets wobbly. I would like to thank the mayor, all the council members, Ray Moore, everyone involved who has worked with us to get this issue resolved. It's been long and hard, but we did it, hopefully, and nothing else will come up. It's been a long lesson learned also on my part, so I promise to do my best in the future <laughs> to have everything docketed and calendared and ready to go when it's supposed to be. But I did want to let you guys know my appreciation and thanks for everything that you've done for us. Thank you. Okay, we have a liquor license renewal for Freedom Stomp. And a report from city staff. Thank you, sir. I'll call on Ms. Warner. Thank you. Lori O'Malley, on behalf of Payel Enterprises, doing business as Freedom Stop at 503-505 East Walnut, has filed an application for her 2015-16 renewal of their liquor license. Um, the applicant has met city code requirements and staff recommends approval. Um, the applicant is in the audience should council have any questions. Thank you. I want to take a motion. Mr. Mayor, point of order, do we open for public hearing first? Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. We'll open the uh, floor for public hearing. If you have anything you want to say, you can forward. Keep your comments down to five minutes. Seeing nobody come forward, we'll close the public hearing. Now I'll entertain a motion. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that we approve the liquor license application renewal for pay all enterprises doing business as Freedom Stop. Freedom Stop. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the renewal of the liquor license. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Motion carries unanimously. Uh, may we have the reading of Resolution 1534 by title only, please? The reading of Resolution 15-34 by title only. A resolution of the City of Raymore, Missouri approving the preliminary plat of Prairie View of the Good Ranch subdivision located in sections 2028 20, 29, Township 46 North, Range 32 West, Raymore, Cass County, Missouri. This too requires a public hearing, so we'll open up public hearing. Anybody want to speak? Come forward, state your name for the record. Seeing no one, I'll close the public hearing. Take a motion. Uh, you oh. need a staff report, oh, sir. Staff report, please. <clears throat> Sorry. Thank you. And the staff report does need to be a component of the public hearing. Okay. I'll leave the public hearing. Thank you, sir. Uh, I'll call on Mr. Cataret. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, resolution 15-34 uh, is a request for a preliminary plat approval for the prairie view of the Good Ranch uh, subdivision. This is a proposed 86 lot uh, single family subdivision. Uh, proposed for the south side of Hubach Hill Road, uh, east of Haystack Road. Since it is a land use matter, it does require a public hearing that was advertised for this evening. I do need to enter into the record the notices that were sent to adjoining property owners. The notice that was published in the journal newspaper, our Unified Development Code, the application, our growth management plan, and the staff report uh, submitted in your packets this evening. 
just a couple of staff comments. The uh, Prairie View of the Good Ranch, there is a current valid final plat on this subdivision. It was a final plat that was actually approved back in uh, 2007 and it has been recorded. That is still, uh, again, a valid plat that the property owner could decide to build if they, if they want to. What they're asking for this evening is to modify uh, the plat for that property. In, in essence, if the preliminary plat is approved, they would come forward with a final plat that would be a replat. It would basically eliminate the existing approved plat. Uh, they, with this preliminary plat, they are increasing the number of lots in the subdivision. That was the purpose for the rezoning that was approved earlier this evening. Uh, and this preliminary plat was based upon uh, that rezoning effort. A couple of things about this particular plat. Um, the access points to this subdivision are proposed off of Brook Parkway and North Cass Parkway. If you drive by the property today, you will see that there is a curb cut off of Hubach Hill Roadway to the property, but that um, is not being proposed as part of this plat. So that access would be eliminated and the access to the subdivision, again, would be from the east uh, of Brook Parkway and from the south off North Cass Parkway. I uh, do want to note that the uh, uh, facilities that would be uh, providing services to this subdivision would be the City of Raymoor Sanitary Sewer. Uh, the potable water would be from uh, Public Water Supply District Number 10. It is with, entirely located within their service area. The applicant has been advised of that. The one comment on the Stormwater Master plan for the particular development. Uh, this particular project does fall under the Master Development Agreement regarding stormwater. <coughs> Uh, for the Good Ranch. So at the time that a final plat is submitted, uh, the developer will submit a, a geomorphic subarea watershed plan and uh, the details of that plan would then determine what specific stormwater improvements do need to be made uh, uh, to negate the, any impacts that this particular development might have on the uh, watershed area. So that actual plan will come forward as a final plat uh, moves forward. Uh, in conversations with the developer, if the preliminary plat is approved, they would build this plat in three phases. Uh, the first phase would be up in the north uh, east corner, and it would include the access off of Brook Parkway, and, and I believe approximately 30 lots for the first phase. Uh, the commission did submit, the planning commission did submit proposed findings of fact for your consideration. It was at their uh, June 16th meeting, they did hold a public hearing. Uh, they did, did vote unanimously, nine to zero, to support the request for the preliminary plat and uh, submit a recommendation of, appro of approval to the council uh, on the preliminary plat. They did condition it upon the approval of the zoning request with that being approved earlier. It does meet the condition that they placed upon the recommendation. The uh, Public Works uh, Department did submit a memorandum regarding the provision of adequate public facilities for the site. And I did include a copy of the minutes excerpt so you could see the discussion the Planning Commission had on the application. I believe there is a representative here. Um, if you have questions uh, um, specifically, um, the staff stands ready to answer any questions you have of us. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'll open the floor for public comment. Please identify yourself for the record. And keep Mr. Coming. Mayor, point of order, uh, can I pose a question yes. to staff? Uh, Mr. Cataret, um, I noticed that using the uh, future land use plan map, um, this was initially designated as a low density residential area, um, but with the 50% increase in residences and the square footage running, some of those lots you're going to run over four, ha four dwelling units per acre, depending on where you point the center of the acre. Um, would this not move this up to a medium density residential area and how would that affect things? The uh, growth management plan, um, the definition of low density is, is between zero and four units per acre. That's gross acre. Uh, so we do, although there may be in a concentrated area, if you look at a specific area, it may go over the four units to an acre. Overall, that's how we determine density on the subdivision with uh, approximately 35 acres of land and 86 lots, the density of this subdivision, gross density is at 3.27, which is less than the four. Uh, so it is within the required, uh, what would be the required maximum density. So it does comply with our growth management plan and our UDC. 
As a follow-up question, the property on the very northwest corner, um, which is not being developed, is that portion being included in that calculation? It is not. No, it sir. It is not. Okay. Um, the next question is: do you, Has the developer provided pictures of the of the suggested homes, or any demonstration of what the homes are going to look like on these lots? They they have they have provided that. Yes, that was one of the requirements for the uh, rezoning is to show a variation in in uh, home styles. So they couldn't come in and just build one particular style of home to get that plan district zoning that they got they had to show a variety of uh, home plans and, and facades and they showed i believe approximately six different home styles that they intend to build there um, i believe i understood that those were shown to the planning and zoning commission do we have access to those tonight i could bring those up yes sir okay. yeah take a few minutes but i can Thank access you. those okay i'll open the uh Floor for public comment. Please identify yourself for the record and keep you for comments to under five minutes. Nope. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. The gross density does include the common areas and the streets. So you basically look at the perimeter of the site, that's a total of 35 acres, and then do the, that is our normal way of defining density, yes, by, by gross density. Mr. Mayor, I had a question concerning the um, amount of parking ground. Has that been included? I don't know what the ratio is, but we've got, uh, what, 86 lots, so we probably have at least 200 people that will be in there. So what is the ratio for the parks? Is, have they increased the amount of space they're going to have for parks when they went from 86 to, from 60 to 86? It, the, the determination of the park land that was um, negotiated, if you will, when the initial uh, subdivision was planned back in 1994 was based on a total of what the maximum density was. So every phase that has come forward Stone Gate, Wood Creek, Meadows, and Meadow Wood have all been below the density that was set back in 1994. So they have exceeded the actual amount of park land that, that they would have to do if we determined it phase by phase. So the, the fact that this density is being increased over what was initially platted, it's still below the maximum, so it's still below what they were required to um, to, to dedicate to the city with the initial MOU back in 1994. So there is no need to require additional parkland as part of it. They've already agreed to donate all the parkland that they were required to do. Well, I know that you keep uh, comments were being made about this being more or less isolated because it was three different uh, streets were coming together on it. So that was why I was concerned, not that it would be a part of the overall, but that it would specifically applied to that uh, one area and will there be a homeowners association involved in this too yes there will be this will have its own homeowners association so it will not be um, part of stone gate or any other uh, good ranch subdivision it will have its own homeowners association well a concern that i have is a lack of diversity on this we're going to have 80 mr mayor slots, point of order and that's what i was curious about my concern is that we're getting into speaking of uh, the merits of the case, and we're not, we don't even have a motion on the floor yet. I've asked. I'll close the public hearing. Move on to entertaining a motion. Mr. Mayor, if I may. Mm -hmm. Apologize. Uh, I do need, since I am distributing the, uh, there are two documents being passed out to the council. Uh, each document includes photographs of the facades that, they, that the uh, developer has submitted. Uh, that's part of the requirement for the zoning of the property. So I do need to enter those into the record, if I may. Okay. Do you need 
Jim, do you need a motion for that? No. We okay. do not need a, a motion to enter those into the record. No. We do need a motion on resolution 1534, though. Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve resolution 15 34 per review preliminary plat. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve resolution 1534. Is there any discussion? Please go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have a question about the HOA. Is that something the developer provides you information on, on what uh, those covenants are going to be? The, the only requirement that we would have is regarding um, in the covenants that we would look at is regarding maintenance of the common area. So as long as the covenants specify that the HOA is responsible and will maintain the common area, that's the only part of the covenants that we look at. But my we'll concern, have to submit that as part of the final Yeah, my plan. concern is the street parking in a small confined area with just two ways in, you know, is that going to be an issue if there's not a uh, HOA covenant that doesn't allow that during storm conditions or uh, that type of thing. So, I know it, the concern was brought up at the Good Neighbor meeting, so I know the uh, developer is aware of the concern. At this time, um, th these are public streets, so will be the standard local street width, and uh, there will be parking allowed at this time on both sides of the street. As, at some point in time, that issue could be looked at. If it truly becomes an issue, it's a little hard to know at this point in time. And one other. Um, we discussed the setback being six foot. Uh, um, is there any other neighborhoods? Do we have any? I know Shadow Ridge, I think, is seven foot. Is there any other neighborhoods with that six foot setback? Yes, yes, sir. We do have some that actually go down to five foot. Um, those subdivisions are more standard square rectangular lots. So if you look at Alexander Creek and you look at uh, Morning View, they have five foot side yards. This particular subdivision, uh, the proposal is six, but again, that's a minimum. Um, and when, you, when I review building permits for most lots, the minimum side yard is rarely, it's really down to that, to that small. Yeah, I, typically, when you're looking at homes that are constructed on these properties, uh, the setbacks exceed what the minimums. It's just very rare to see both side yards to be at the minimum. It just doesn't happen. If I may, yes. Mr. Kilmore. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm kind of curious. I, I remember here recently in the past that we had some discussion. I think it goes back maybe a year ago, but I'm going to ask for, to refresh my memory as to the uh, footage. Um, parking on the street, there's restrictions that you can only, without permission, to park so many feet within a driveway that you cannot encroach upon so many feet. Can you refresh us, the council, what that is? I, something in the back of my mind is if it's four feet that there is a, there's a, there's a space there that you cannot park within four feet of a driveway. It, it goes back to the discussion that we had with the, uh, the mailboxes and when we had that issue there you have any? I, I recall the discussion. Certainly there's a, a parking setback from a stop sign and from a fire hydrant that, that may be along the street. There was some discussion around the post office box. True, yeah. The, uh, from what would be a centrally located you know, mailbox area. I don't recall a setback from a edge of a driveway. I, I apologize. I, I don't know of one in our code. And I don't want to. I don't want to micromanage you, but I, may I ask Chief Zimmerman? She's in the audience. Would you do you remember anything like that, Chief? Is there anything in the code that that your officers, from time to time, have to enforce? And I, I, I apologize if I'm wrong, but there's, there's definitely something in my memory banks that, that I remember those discussions that, uh, because I, I remember it coming up because of the cul-de-sac issue. And uh, something tells me there's four feet. So I'm gonna ask for Chief Zimmerman's uh, input. Yes, sir, you're correct. There, there is a, a uh, section of the code that, uh, uh, that we do enforce if you're parked too close to a driveway, so. And I, I believe, you know, and I, this was all of those, those discussions we had back then was to deal with this here, not 
looking into the future, we knew this was coming. But I do remember the intent of those, those discussions and the context of them was because of people backing out of their driveways and, and having somebody park right there that you cannot do that without permission of that, the person that uh, has that driveway. Now a person, nothing stopping from a person, I believe, blocking their own driveway, but. We can still write them a ticket for blocking their own okay. driveway. Well, thank you. <laughs> okay, <laughs> uh, but that, that was the intent of those, of those discussions. Uh, you know, and I'm, I'm saying this for the benefit of the council up here now. Uh, so, you know, uh, many of these, these discussions have been taking place in the past and uh, it was uh, concurrent or, or the consensus of the council to uh, pass that ordinance because I, I recall the police not having any, any mechanisms or tools in their, in their, in their boxes to, to address that. And uh, it specifically came out of the uh, mailbox issue and it, it morphed into the uh, driveway issue also. I just want to take a minute to say that I think I I think this new plan is great I think that um, having the subdivision not exit onto Hubach Hill is a good change a change for the better um, I also just want to take a minute to point out some of our our goals that we've set as a council are talking about varying the types and sizes and costs of housing in the city um, we We've talked as a council about wanting to do things to encourage different types of people, different types of families um, to move into Raymore, to stay in Raymore. We know that on many occasions we've had conversations as council um, talking about our seniors that graduate and then they can't afford to live here or our young people who graduate go to college and with a brand new job or a brand new family, they can't afford to live here. So I think um, we should welcome with open arms a, a neighborhood like this that will vary the types of families that we have here. I love that the developer has said, you know, this is where families will start in Raymore so, and then stay here and buy a bigger house as, you know, they work longer and are able to make more money as their family sizes increase. Um, I think this also provides a great opportunity for some of our aging families in Raymore who are looking to downsize, who don't want to have to take care of a huge yard. You know, while some of us may want a big yard, we may not want to be close to our neighbors. We may want a bigger house or a more expensive house. That's not what everybody wants. And I don't think that as a council, we get to choose what everybody who moves into Raymore gets to have. Um, I think this is another way to offer what we were calling some life cycle housing so that we can have houses for various ages, various families, various incomes in our community. So I'm all for this um, and wish them luck. Is there any other discussion? Council Member Stevens? I, Speaking I of which, um, do you know how much the, the range of housing is going to cost in here? I mean, talking about entry level homes, I'm just kind of wondering how much are they? At the uh, Good Neighbor meeting, and I think it was repeated at the Planning Commission, the range is between 180000 and 250000 So, Any other discussion? One of the, Mr. Mayor, mm -hmm. one of the things that bothers me on some of this, we talk about quality and then we talk about quantity. And in looking at some of these pictures, I happen to be a little bit older than some of you that are here, and I look at these uh, houses, and they have no railings, no way for that, uh, an older person to even get up to the house. So I guess some of my questions are, what are we doing to ensure that we're getting quality, not only in this subdivision, but in every subdivision that we're talking about? In the past, when I've gone out and carried petitions, I've had some railings that weren't even hardly safe to, to go up and down. And I just wondered and I, I, if we are sacrificing quality for some of these things. And I don't know how the rest of you feel about it, but I do know that there's, there's more to a house than just the four walls and the roof. You, you can have a, a diamond is small, 
but oh my, it, it's worth a lot. And that's the way with some of these houses. They, just because they're small doesn't mean that they are, are poor quality. But how do we determine what is good quality and what is not in a house? What do we, de for instance, I don't see any place here where they're going to have a clubhouse for 86 families. They should have some place where they can meet and uh, just, just get together. The city cannot afford to pay uh, clubhouses for every subdivision. They should take care of those themselves, but I see nothing like that in here. And I'm just wondering if that has been uh, included. Did you all discuss that in any way? It was not, the uh, issue of the clubhouse was not discussed. Uh, I can't say that none of the subdivisions in, in Stonegate or Wood Creek or Meadowwood have a clubhouse. Um, so it's not a requirement to have that. The discussion was on amenities for the subdivision. So there are some amenities specific to this specific site. Um, but no, there's, there's not a, one of the amenities to be provided um, is, is not a clubhouse, no. And uh, your, your question regarding the uh, quality, um, the only thing, you know, the, the entire building code is not based on quality, it's based on the minimum standards that have to be met in every home. We don't inspect for quality, we inspect to make sure the standards are met. Um, the, the planning commission in this discussion did look at the proposed building facades because they were interested in seeing some diversity in what the buildings would look like. They did not want to have every home in this subdivision look the same. And so we know that will not happen now with, with the, uh, the uh, zoning approval. Uh, but, we, but when we look at quality, we just make sure it meets our property maintenance code and our residential codes when, when it's constructed, uh, when the new homes are constructed. So that's the only way we really look at, you know, the, the physical building itself. We, we never inspect for, for quality. It's not something that the city really should do. Well, that's something that I find that, because uh, it doesn't take long for a house to deteriorate and we're having 35 acres of houses all based on just 500 square, 5,000 square feet. And we've got uh, a lot of other areas too that are uh, the same way. It's just almost like it's boring because there's so little diversity. You have, uh, this subdivision's got 5,000 square feet. This subdivision's got 8,400 uh, square feet. This one has got 72. This one's got something else, and we don't have any diversity. When you come in, the only place we have mixed use is in the, the older part of uh, Raymore, where you've got houses that are of different sizes on different sizes lots. And I'd like to see a little bit more of that diversity rather than 35 acres of all, everything being the same uh, cookie cutter. But, uh, but you're saying we don't have any way that we can uh, delegate or require that, do we? In other words, is, why, why can't they have, in this 86 uh, lots, why can't they have at least three or four of them that might be uh, on a larger lot or might even be a duplex or might even be a multiple use in order to have some diversity? If you, I think if you do look at the preliminary plat, you do have a diversity of lot sizes in the subdivision. Not all these lots are as small as 5,000 square foot. They can't be below 7,200 square feet, but you have lots that are larger within the subdivision. So they're not, certainly not cookie cutter. There's, okay. because of the road design, you know, almost all the lots are different from the lot next to them. Very few lots are similar in this particular subdivision. Is there any other discussion? Go ahead. I have a question for staff, if I could, uh, Mr. Willerth, if you could entertain me. It's been a while since we've had a really involved discussion on uh, planning and zoning issues. If you give me a refresher on what our, our parameters are on preliminary plat as far as our latitude on what we're able to consider or should consider. I mean, I just like the discussion. I may even remember it when you start talking. I don't know. <clears throat> the factors on the preliminary plat are found on page 229 of the agenda at the 
preliminary plat not adversely the affect the use of neighboring property, that it be in compliance with applicable regulations of the UDO growth management plan, not impose undue burden upon existing public services and facilities, and make adequate provision with respect to roads, streets, water supply, and storm surge. I think some of the discussion here would get into micromanaging or redeveloping or replanning the plan change that the developer has submitted. It's the developer's option as to size and types of lots and housing as long as it's within our codes and uh, that are outlined here. And from my understanding from Mr. Cataret's review, there are six types of housing that's been shown in the photographs. There's a variety of lot sizes and they're within the confines of section 47110 of the code. So it's really not a legislative decision at the plat level. That was at the zoning level. Here this is an administrative function about whether it's meeting these factors and at least the evidence I've heard seems to be that the plat is in compliance with the factors but I'll defer to Mr. Cataret if he finds anything that was unusual or not in compliance with his code provisions. I suspect if he did that would have been found on page 229. It appears that the recommended findings of fact is that these are all in compliance with our applicable code provisions. Thank you, sir. Any other discussion? I have one other thing I'd like to, to, to mention. Please, go ahead. And, uh, on that, and that has to do with the street names. We take collector streets and we call them parkways. That's just, we're, that's not what a parkway is. We should call a street exactly what it is. If it's a collector street, it's one thing. If it's, it's a local street, it is. If it is a parkway or if it is an avenue, and we don't have those in Raymore, yet we do have the streets that are called that. I would like for us to take a look and make sure that we identify a street by its, its proper name. Don't call it a, a, collect a local street that just serves a half a dozen people. Don't call it a parkway. Don't call it an avenue. It's a street. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve 1534. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. We have the first reading of Bill 3081 by title only, please. The first reading of Bill 3081 by title only, an ordinance of the City of Raymore, Missouri, amending the park fund of the fiscal year 2015 budget. Staff report. Thank you, sir. I'll call on Mr. Mustine. Thank you, Mayor, Council. Um, this amendment is an expansion purchase of two vehicles. Um, although an expansion, in, in essence, we are replacing two vehicles that are within the park fleet that, frankly, just need to, to go away. They, uh, the, the park van is a 1997 van that, at this point, no longer starts. Um, so we would like to replace that with a cargo van. This, this vehicle is used for uh, special events, uh, transporting trees and flowers so that wind in the backs of the trucks and stuff doesn't, take, doesn't damage those items. The second vehicle is the trash truck. It is a, uh, 19, or it's a 1999 Dodge. And it, it does start, but it, it's one bad morning away from not being worth repairing. <laughs> so uh, what we would like to do is is in essence trade that one in on a administrative recreation truck and and what we would like to do with this particular truck is is use it for um, recreation and administration transporting baseball equipment our storage unit basically is at the park house so anytime we have coaches meeting stuff we're hauling equipment back and forth to where the meetings are we use it for farmers market all, all of our programs and stuff so what we want to do is uh, purchase these vehicles we've proposed in our FY16 budget already into the VERT program so they are fully funded in the VERT program as we as time goes on and this is one step closer uh, actually this probably completes our VERT program as far as the entire parks fleet being funded within the VERT program so it's kind of a closure to, to a program and it gives our staff the tools although expensive I understand that it does give us tools to be efficient and effective on a day-to-day -day basis. Any questions? Thank you, Mr. Mustine. I'm famous for 
asking for things to be dumbed down or uh, yes, checking for understanding questions just to verify this is your money or not your personal money but this is parks board money you're simply you're not asking for additional funds you're simply asking for our authorization via the MOU of the expenditure is that correct yes sir we're asking for a transfer from the park fund balance into the capital outlay account to purchase Thank these you. vehicles I'm just curious mm -hmm. and it really doesn't matter but just curious so do we have another truck we're going to use for trash are we not collecting our own trash anymore? yes with with the addition of the cargo van that puts one more workable vehicle into the fleet and so we have a smaller Colorado uh, that will use for a trash truck and it actually is is much easier to use because it's a smaller vehicle the 2500 ram is is quite large and it gets cumbersome to load those barrels into it so we would move one into the trash truck and the and the cargo van would just become folded into the fleet and used for day-to-day -day operations any other questions thank you I entertain a motion mr. mayor I move that we approve bill 3081 for a budget amendment for the park fund vehicle additions second a motion and a second to approve Bill 3081. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. That takes care of new business. We'll open the floor for public comment. If you'd like to come forward, please identify yourself for the record. Keep your comments for under five minutes. Close the public comment and move on to Mayor Council communication. This evening, Councilmember Holman would go first. It's the first time I've been first since I've been here, I think. It really is. I think you're like eighth in the lineup. That's where you put the worst hitters, you know. <laughs> uh, just a couple of quick things. One, um, I, I wanted to uh, commend Mr. Mustine for uh, his vision. Um, we had seen some issues in the past where uh, I don't think Parks fully understood uh, the ability of their budget to do these kind of things. And obviously he does understand that understands the needs of the parks department and uh, that's why I just kind of went for that clarification tonight but uh, you got it going keep it going you're doing a good job second thing is um, for those in the audience and and all five of them that are watching on TV tonight uh, the city is doing its best to uh, I think I stole this from from Derek um, to give back to the city deliver small victories um, you've heard me talk about this the striper you, you did you notice how much better 58 looked I mean the condition of the road didn't change but when Mike got his people out there and striped it is like putting a new paint of coat or new coat of paint on a house um, the the improvements that are going in at uh, the farmers market uh, we're really coming a long way um, Derek's got his term uh, Meredith would call it reimagine Raymore we're trying to improve the quality of life it's little things it's gonna get better I really again want to commend staff mr. Fearborn and your group they're doing a fantastic job it's showing and things are gonna get better that's all I have Mr. Member Hubach I wanted to say that I really like the striping the black and white striping on 58 because when the weather is bad you see the places where it is been, the black tar has been put and you think that you're on the right t track and you find out you may be in another lane so I like the way in which this is done and I hope that get more and more of it and thank you to the city for doing it thank you mr. mayor um, I just want to echo kudos to the staff I have noticed uh, quite an improvement in communication um, in our council packets a lot more updated information including some pictures from parks and other departments and um, more information on times of when things are starting and when things are finishing and kind of where we are as far as even percentages of what's completed and what's left to complete and so that's great information for us to have and um, thanks to staff for I know you guys work hard to get us all that information and you're staying on top of things and just want to let you know we appreciate it or I appreciate it um, secondly I um, believe this will be our last meeting before the fireworks show on the fourth I wondered if mr. Mustine was prepared to give a little plug for that we haven't heard much not that we need it it's always very well attended but if you wouldn't mind maybe talking a little bit about what's going to be going on at the park on the fourth 
Absolutely. So uh, obviously July 4th, we have our, our annual fireworks event uh, this year. Much like the previous years, we have the, uh, the car show, the, the band. I'm, caught me on the band name. <laughs> Southtown, South. We're gonna go with South something, <laughs> but I, I hear I that they the are they are highly recommended and excellent, um, as the, it's their second year. So they were here last year. Um, really, just a great event, and uh, my staff has been working very hard preparing as as they always do. Uh, we began this week. Now that the rains kind of subsided, uh, to start prepping the parks and uh, we're mulching trees and cutting weeds and, and things of that nature that we can finally get to. So hope to have the parks looking uh, top shape and uh, just invite everybody to come out. It's a great event. We, the city invests a lot of money in this event and we work really hard. So we hope that everybody can come out and enjoy that time. Nathan, do you, do you remember the times as far as the shoot is concerned and when things open up? And yeah, we, we will be there around 4.30 for the car show and um, well, you, you did catch me off guard. So I, I'm thinking around 4.30, but we can verify that. And the, the fireworks show itself starts what we call around dusk. And typically, his, historically, it's been between 9 and 9.30, depending on how late it gets. But uh, they'll, they'll shot, fire off a warning shot, and, and you, anywhere in town, you can know. Hey, did you bring my flyer? <laughs> <laughs> this is the flyer that we made. And, uh, car show starts at 4.00. We, we have, uh, I forgot about this part because I'm usually parking cars when I was here before. So uh, we do have kids games from seven to nine. So a lot of just carnival type activities throughout the parks. Uh, South Town, I was, I'm right. And as the flyer states, this is the area's largest fireworks show. So kudos to you guys for funding that. Thank you. Uh, we, we do have concessions and there's a couple vendors that have uh, uh, food trucks, but then we also have concessions. So. We uh, asked everybody to buy something from everybody. Anything else? All right, very good. Okay, Commissioner Barber. Thank you, Ms. Mayor. Uh, I got to uh, give kudos to Mr. Mustine, uh, the farmer's market. I've been to both of them. I think we're having our third one tomorrow. And um, there is a person on this council that works one of the booths that I got to tell you is, <laughs> has some good food there so if you haven't gone out there to the farmers market it's it's under construction but it's still a lot of people using it's good to see everybody get together and it's a I think that's a real good thing thank you Councilmember Stevens thank you mr. mayor you know I thought I'd heard all the comments on the roundabout that the other day uh, I found out I was wrong I was uh, riding on the trails the back of a uh, timber trails and I came across some sidewalk art and there was a big circle and it said caution roundabout <laughs> so that was kind of funny councilmember Moorhead um, I will also give a plug for the farmers market um, I, I had made mention to the mayor the last public meeting that he forgot to mention the 72 <laughs> clear and last week we had rain so I'm hoping during the final comment we get that little karma blessing <laughs> but it has been wonderful to go out to it's been well attended I'm very happy to see everybody out there and I also have to plug the ribs um, that's a good buy uh, at least my stomach feels that way um, which leads me into my next thing, which I'm not going to commend uh, Mr. Mustine for. Um, you know, I did play competitive ball in college, but as I've gotten older, I've realized young people can take me. Um, and to hear that somebody now at age 55 and older, I am not going to go out and become depressed watching older people show that I need to get out and exercise more. So, uh, oh, you're killing me. Okay. <laughs> But I do appreciate and hope that is a successful tournament and other people should attend and, and watch. I won't. Um, uh, I also want to make mention to Mr. Crass and the rest of Public Works. Over the last month, with all the major rains that we've had, we had some uh, sewer construction at 1009 Johnston Drive because we had a lot of flooding there. And the neighbors stopped over at my parents' house and raved about the fact that even with the flooding down the street, there wasn't a single puddle. And so that that project was a, a wicked success. So I wanted to pass that along. 
Um, and then finally, you, you know, I, I, will, I will make one little political commentary here is, you know, periodically we do have businesses in town that hit some lulls and hit some struggles. And we do have, we have made it a habit to support our businesses. And in doing so, sometimes it means we have to kind of cut them a little slack to help them out because we do want them to do well. Um, it is nice to see instances where when we do give these extensions that sometimes they're successful as with the business tonight. We've had some successes and that's part of the reason why we do that. We want to see them succeed. We do support them. And so I wanted to, you know, commend obviously the pit, but uh, um, any business. I mean, we have a number of them in town. Everybody's fighting and struggling with the rest of them. Um, but we do welcome all our businesses here before the council and we will try to be as helpful and we appreciate when they come before us and, and work with us as our current applicant did. So I was happy to support them tonight. Councilmember Kellogg. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'll just pour on some more thank yous for staff and relay a personal story that I had. And it just to, to publicly say how much it's appreciated and, and noticed, uh, I think it was a week ago, was it Tuesday? I think it was Tuesday when I called Jim. Uh, somebody, one of, one of our citizens had some uh, work done in their yard and the contractor hauled out some mulch and left a pretty good sized trail on 58. And when I come around that corner, the, uh, even my mom van that I drive now broke loose and kind of fishtailed them. But anyway, uh, it concerned me because of, you know, it's right outside of Huntsman, you know, and, and you got to be going to get out there at some times. Sometimes you just really got to floor it. And uh, that happened to me, and I, I called Jim, and Jim took my call right then and there. And uh, I relayed to him that, you know, it was a traction hazard, and it, I wouldn't be doing that if I didn't see any imminent d danger. And, uh, you know, this was after staff had went home. And I know we've got on-call staff in that, but it, it just drove home to me how appreciative I am of those people. And they are the, we, fantastic staff, but they just respond so readily so readily and it's it's extremely appreciated um uh, you know i not that i not that i i watch but i was just curious how long it would take <laughs> within an hour and a half that was picked up you know so that that is pretty darn efficient and very responsive and uh i'm very appreciative and i i'm, I'm sure my colleagues are also so uh kudos to to your staff and all the way across from from our office staff to our our public works to our parks to our police <laughs> you know i almost called her police on that one i said no nah, i'm going to give jim a shot on this so um again I, I just can't say thank you enough on on behalf of the city of raymore for all you do i mean it it just it's fantastic for me to see it thank you councilmember burke one thing i i noticed i know we've got the new uh stripe uh, painting truck but there are a lot of things that they the public works cannot do with that truck and one of the things I noticed taking my daughter to swim practice this morning is that they were delineating the lines between 58 and Johnson where where there's two left-hand turn lanes and then on the other side there's one left-hand turn lane and they're painting those so they can clearly be seen so hopefully people put down their phones and drive when it's green and pay attention to where those lines are and keep us safe. Uh, but I, I, I knew those had to be painted by hand and I appreciated that they were, um, I can see they were at least halfway done this morning. I, I'm sure they're probably done all the way by now. Thank you so much. Okay, and I'll just echo all the kudos and compliments that everybody else made. And we have reason to go into executive session this evening. Mr. We do, Mayor. sir. Mr. Mayor, I move that we enter into executive session to discuss personal matters as authorized by 610.021, subsection 3. Second. Roll call vote, please. 
Member Abdelgawad? Yes. Councilmember Barber? Yes. Councilmember Burke? Yes. Councilmember Holman? Yes. Councilmember Hubach? Yes. Councilmember Kellogg? Yes. Councilmember Moorhead? Yes. Councilmember Stevens? Yes. Okay, we're going to break for executive session. We'll reconvene the main meeting just to dismiss. Thank you.